Hi there, so in this video I'm going to talk about this component, which I'm calling a cell, uh, just because in Redwood.js they have cells components, but basically it's this await syntax. So basically it turns this promise into sort of a state machine type component, uh, which we have access to here with let state. So the four states of the cell would be idle, so nothing has happened. It would be loading while it's loading, and then it would be success if it um, resolves and it would be error if it doesn't, we get this error. Okay, so there's four states, and basically what this is solving for me is this issue of, basically I have this form here, and I want the user to be able to see the form when it's in the, um, if it's successful, and I also wanna show it if, it's, if there's an error, and I also wanna show it if uh, it's in the idle state. So I wanna show it in these three different ways, and there's no real good way. Uh, let me know if you have a better way, but. Um, in my experience, there's no real good way to show this form in three different states here um, with this await then catch syntax. Okay, so what this does is let, lets me put it in a cell and I now have access to the state and I can render stuff based on what state I'm in. Okay, so I'm doing two things here. I've got svelte fragment and I'm also using an if statement. So they're kind of doing similar things, uh, but a little different. So by having this slot loading, I'm saying, I want, when I'm in the loading state, show loading, this and only this. So you saw, um, right, it's just loading. Okay, so this blocks everything out. Uh, whereas here I have if state equals success, you'll see the response, uh, this if is here is rendered along with the um, form. But if I remove this if, and I turned it into a svelte fragment, then, it's going to load and then not show the form anymore. Okay, so basically the svelte fragment says, when I'm in this state, success, show me and only me. If I use an if statement, like we were before, it just means uh, show everything else here, and then if I'm in the state, show me too. Okay, and the reason for this is because here in cell, we have these slots. We've got lots of, uh, lots of different slots. So these slots, uh, right here are the name slots. So name is loading, name is success, name error, etc. cetera. Uh, name is idle. If the user has not defined where to, um, if they haven't defined a salt fragment for that slot, then it's going to default to the uh, main slot, if that makes sense. Okay, so for example, I haven't defined a slot success, so it's going to keep everything in the main slot and um, I'm just using the state to uh, render this one as well. Uh, so for success, so sorry, it's uh, a bit hard to sort of wrap your mind around at first, but for success, I've got the slot and it's passing in the response to me. And um, because I do not have the success slot, it is using the default slot. This has no name, but it's passing the state up and the response. So I have access to those two things. Now, if I turned it into a fragment, I would then be putting it in here, and I would be in this block, and therefore I would only be showing this and not the main slot, which is this one without a name. Okay, um, a bit tricky to sort of uh, get at first, but that's what it's. That's how it's working. And then the nice thing about this too is, I can use this component. I could copy paste and have multiple of these, um, and I can put different types of defaults if I want. So. Right now the default is, for error, the default is, okay, let's say they don't define a slot. Then I'm gonna use the main slot, and I'm just passing in the error and state. But if I wanted to, I could say, okay, if there is an error, I want to, at the top of this cell, I'm gonna have strong, I'm gonna say style equals uh, color red, and I'm going to put an error right here. So if the user doesn't feel like defining what to do in the error state, I'm just gonna put an error here at the top. So for example, if I put a negative and I get them, uh-oh, very bad error, no results, okay? Because my fetch them all here, uh, which fetching all the Pokemon, it, it throws this error. Okay, so that's the default for my cell. So now I can have defaults. And same with um, loading. Maybe I don't wanna define what the loading state is every time. So right here, I could say um, state is loading, or I could, you know, I could just say, I'm not gonna let you do anything. If it's loading, we're just gonna say loading like this, and you have no choice in it. Oh wait, what happened? Um, if not, oh, oops, I need to remove this one too. So just, if we're in this 
loading state, it's going to say loading, no matter what. Okay. Um, or I could say, yeah, if you haven't defined it, then it's going to say loading. So the issue, oh, the issue there was I did define it, so it wasn't going to the default. Um, yeah. Okay. So does that make sense? Let me know if this makes sense in the comments or what you do. Uh, so by using these here, so like I'm basically passing stuff back up into the cell. And so like, for example, I could also, you know, maybe I want the button to be disabled when it's loading. So uh, rather than blocking the whole screen, maybe I'll remove this and I'll just say disabled equals when state is equal to loading. So now I click it and now it's disabled and bam. Okay, and then here in cell, you know, maybe I have that default of if they haven't defined it, then it says loading. Okay, so it says loading and it disabled and now I have this. Okay, so for this for, for me, this helps me think about it more easily. So I can say like, um, I can give defaults to the behavior. I can, you know, I can block the screen. I can, um, you know, I can use the state to basically do anything I want to in this cell. And um, it helps me to reason about it better and write it more declaratively as sort of like this little state machine type thing. Um, and yeah, okay, let me know if that made sense. That's all for this video.